Today we're going to show you how to create a perfect carousel for social media in Photoshop. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're going to show you how to create a carousel for social media. Now in this case we're going to be doing Instagram posts but you can literally use this tutorial for any social media platform that supports a carousel. Basically it's when you swipe through the images and they all kind of relate to one another. All right so we're going to get started with a little bit of math but don't worry it's going to be great. So we're jumping right in here. Now the first thing I did was just look up the Instagram post size and this is 1080 in width by 1350 in height. So I wanna figure out basically how many slots I want available and we're gonna choose 10 because that's the maximum that we can use for Instagram. So what I need to do here is I need to take this 1080 and I need to multiply that by 10, okay? Cause that's how wide it's gonna be. So we're just gonna to go to a calculator here. Let's just clear this. So we're gonna to go to 1080, then we're gonna to go to times 10 and then equals. And then in this case, it's 10,800 pixels. You could have probably done that in your head. I just wanted to show you this tool. Basically, this is how you would do it for any type of social media. You just want to find the width of the actual dimensions of the post and then multiply that. In this case, we're going to do by 10. Okay, so 10... Uh, 10,800 in width. So what we'll do, let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. I'm gonna hit Control or Command N for new, and we're just gonna punch that in 10,800 pixels. That's gonna be the width of our document. Now, you guys are gonna be able to download this exact PSD that we're creating. So if you're gonna be using Instagram posts and want a carousel, just download this. It's on flurn.com. It's totally free. Just follow the link right down below. Um, but I wanted to show you how to do it too. Now, our height is gonna be 1350, because that's the height of each individual post that we got from looking it up on the internet. Okay, that's done with the technical stuff, done with the math, I promise. <laughs> it's just fun stuff now. Okay, let's go ahead and hit create. So what we have here is basically, I'm gonna hit F for full screen. What we have here is just a really super long image, right? Like this is literally what our image is. So what we need to first do is slice it up. I want to create a bunch of different guides and we're going to slice it up vertically. So we're going to go to view. We're going to go down to guides. Okay. And then we're going to go to new guide layout. This is the easiest way to do it. New guide layout. Okay. Check this out with this new guide layout. You can go right over here to where it says columns. Let's go ahead and click that on. And I'm going to type in 10 columns. Okay. 10 columns and their gutter. We don't need to use a gutter here that basically just creates uh like spacing between each. So now let's go ahead and count them. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this would be 10 different photographs or a combination of those. Okay, fantastic. Now, the other thing you want to make sure you do is click on margins, okay? And then this should all be zero. That's going to give us a margin up here at the top and down here at the bottom. So we've automatically created these guides. Remember, first we multiplied that uh, 10, 1080 by 10, and now we're like basically dividing it by 10 again, so we'll be able to save all these out. Now, the cool thing is once we get this set up, we're going to be able to save all these 10 out automatically. They're going to just put it in a folder. You'll, you'll see it's like kind of magic. Okay, let's hit OK there. Now, each of these looks really good. Let's go ahead and zoom in. The next thing we need to do is I need to create some slices. So we're gonna grab this slice tool. It's right under the crop tool right over here. Slice tool, you can hit C for the keyboard shortcut and shift C to kind of go between them. Now, if I just create a slice here, it like it doesn't always know where the boundaries of the slice should be. So what I recommend doing, let's go ahead and zoom way, way in here, okay? You wanna go to where it says view, you wanna make sure it says snap to, and then turn on guides, because these cyan guides that we just make, th those are called guides. Um, so make sure this has a checkbox next to it, and then the snap is turned on. This way, when I go to create a slice with my slice tool here, check this out, I just start towards the top, and then if I start making my slice, I hold down the space bar and I can move it while I make it. And then look, it, it automatically, you see it snapped to that slice. Boom, it just snaps right there. And then I can kind of bring it down and it's going to snap right there as well. Okay, so these slices are going to be a really important part of what's going to allow us to automatically save these images out. Okay, so again, just click and drag 
hold down the space bar and then you can move this. By the way, you can do that with any selection tool in Photoshop. If you're creating an elliptical marquee or a rectangular marquee, hold that space bar down and you can move it while you create it. So let's go ahead and snap it right up there, snap down there. And these guides, these are going to come in really handy when we save it. This is what allows us to automatically save out these, uh, basically these slices as different images. And because we've created our guides first, and then we're snapping to these guides, it's all going to be perfectly sized. There we go. And then again, I know I already said it, but you can just download this exact thing that I'm making today. So you don't have to do this. But you know, if, if this is the type of thing that you want to make on your own, boom, this is how we're doing it. Okay, we're almost done making these guides. Boom, there we go. And we're on our last one, making our slices rather. So we made our guides first. Now we're making the slices. Okay, cool. So we've got 10 slices here right in the middle. Boop, 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 boop. And that is what's going to be saved out individually. So now it's time to load in our images. So what I want to do, let's go ahead and get out of full screen there. What we're going to do is we're going to go to file and I'm going to go to scripts and then I'm going to go to load files into stack. I'm doing this because I have a bunch of different images in a folder and I just want to put them all in the same document. Okay. You don't have to do this. You could use file place, file open. You could use a bunch of different uh, workflows. This is just a pretty quick way that I like to basically bring in a bunch of different images into one document in Photoshop. So load files into stack. Okay. I'm going to hit over here on browse and let's just go to sample images. Now with your download on this tutorial for free, you're going to be able to get access to all of these as well. So you can follow along completely from start to finish. So I'm just going to go ahead and shift click all of these. Okay. These are all the sample images that we're going to be choosing. In your case, you might want to use your own photographs. In this case, I'm using stock photos. Okay, so all these are uh, selected. Let's go ahead and hit open here. And then you can see it loads them. Thanks, Cotton Bro. Love you. All these are going to be loaded into this stack. And we're going to hit OK right here. There we go. And then what this does, you can see right here, boop, 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 boop. It basically just puts all those documents into a stack. You can see here in my layers panel, right? All those documents are now in a stack in the layers panel. Okay, so how do we go ahead and take these images and put them in to our new document for our carousel? Really easy. You just grab your move tool here. We're going to go ahead and just select here in our layers panel. So let's click on the top. I'm going to hold shift and click on the bottom. So you can see all of my layers are selected, right? And then you can literally just click from here. You can click and drag them into that other document. There you go. And now they're in here. Okay, so that was a pretty quick workflow because I was able to get all my documents into all my photos into one document. And then now I just basically copied them all into here. So everything that I need is right here. So let's hit F for full screen. And now we can start working with this. This is going to be so fun. So on the very top, let's go ahead and move this around. There we go. And we can see as I move this around, I still have my snapping set on, right? So if I bring this, take a look at this little corner right here. As I bring this over, Bop. You see how that automatically snapped into place? That's exactly what we want. So in this case, what's going to go on here is this image is going to take up three different swipes through your carousel, right? So like you might want that. That might be cool. You can hit control or command T for transform. Okay. And then maybe we'll just resize this a little bit. So it's like, you know, you see kind of the first image is like this person running and you see they're holding hands with someone, but like, you're like, who are they holding hands with? Swipe again to find the reveal, right? So let's <laughs> let's hit enter there. Okay, so that's going to be the first image or two. You can kind of move these around. Okay, the next one, let's go ahead and bring that right above and see what this looks like. It's way over there. And then this is basically just a landscape. So with this snapping turned on, you can see I'm able to kind of snap these in place to the borders of like what will wind up being the final photograph. And this is kind of cool. All right, so let's go ahead and... There we go. we we'll snap this. I wish snapping was turned on when you're transforming. It, uh, it, it doesn't turn on when you're transforming. Unfortunately, like if you hit control or command T, it, it won't snap here. And like, if you hold shift, it'll snap there. But like, otherwise it, it's not going to snap there when you hit control or command T like, Oh, if you bring it out from the corner, from the side, it will just not from the corner. Ah, oh, hey, we all learned something new. Check this out. 
If I bring this from the corner, it's not going to snap, right? But if I bring this from the side, boom, that'll snap. Okay, hey, didn't even know that. Cool, let's go ahead and bring that down. That's looking pretty good. Okay, next, we're going to go ahead and find the next photo in our series. And this looks cool. Again, we could do a double here. So let's do let's do the double there. I'm going to hit Control or Command T. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. There we go. Again, so you're like, you know, you're kind of drawn in with this photograph. And then you're like, wait, someone's holding a stick. Who is that? Ah, there we go. So this is going to be, you're going to scroll and, and see that one next. Okay. And then this one, let's see, this is just this subject here. This will become like right here in the next subject. Now, here's a kind of a cool trick right now, because you can see like this photograph here kind of extends over to the, to the boundaries, right? So you're like, okay, which which photograph is that? By the way, if you want to know what photo is, just hold control or command and click on that photo and it'll select it automatically here. Okay. Now I have two options. I can literally just like bring this over to the left a little bit, which is the easier option. Or what I could also do is if I wanted it right there, grab that marquee tool. Okay. Make a selection of the marquee tool. Keep in mind, it's going to snap right to that uh, guide because we told it to. Okay. So make that marquee tool and then go ahead and hold alt or option and click right down here on your layer mask icon. Okay. Boom. Alt or option, it's just going to load that as black on your layer mask. So it basically just hides it, right? There we go. Let's go ahead and put this in there too. A nice central portrait of this person here. Control or command, I can click there to make sure it's selected in my layer document. Now I'm going to do the same thing. M for my marquee tool. We're just going to make a selection here. Beautiful. We have that selection. Now we're going to go right down to our layer mask. Hold alt or option and click on that layer mask. If you don't hold alt or option and click on your layer mask here, totally okay. You can click there, but it's just kind of do the opposite of what you want. Don't worry, not a big deal. Just click right here on that layer mask. Control the command I will invert it, okay? So that alt or option is just kind of a quick trick. All right, next time, next image here, I'm going to hold control or command and we'll bring this up like a nice macro shot. I like that a lot. Fantastic. M for the marquee tool. Let's go ahead and bring that in again. Alt or option, click here. Alt or option, boom, click there. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and get this like photo in. I like that as well. Looking pretty good. That one's just going to be one frame also. You don't have to, you know, make these all two frames if you if you don't want to. All right. Alt or option, click here on the layer mask. Boom. Okay. And then look, we got two frames left. And I have a bunch of photos here, so I, I don't even know what I'm going to do with them. Um, she's a little out of focus. Maybe we won't use that one. Okay, let's see what this is. Ah, oh, this is this is going to be great for two different uh two different photos also. Okay, now keep in mind my layer order. This layer is just under this one. So like if I brought it up, it would like start to overlap here, as you can see. But I can like literally just bring it underneath there, and that kind of does my masking for me, right? Okay, let's go ahead and hit Controller Command T. We can decide where we want this little uh, crop to be. I I generally wouldn't suggest like putting a split between two photos on like the middle of someone's face, right? Because like when you look at the photo on Instagram, you're going to just see like half of this person's face. So I would do like this where it's like just, you know, like there we go, like just in between them. Or I would just go ahead and include both people's face. And then in the next shot, we'll see the rest of the body too. All right. Well, this is pretty cool, right? Like we got a double, we got a single, we got a double. This is really fantastic. Now I want to show you guys one more option here because we still have like a number of these photos, right? So let's go ahead. Let's bring this one all the way to the, the very top. Okay. This is at the top. That looks pretty good. Let's hit controller command T and then just scale it down a little bit. Cause this is another thing that I see a lot happening is you'll have a photo here and then maybe, let's check it out. I'm selected on this layer. I'm going to go to FX right here at the very, very bottom. Okay. And then we're going to go to where it says stroke. There we go. All right. Let's make our color. We're going to choose white for the stroke. Fantastic. And our size, let's just make this a little bit bigger. Okay. I'm going to put this on the center. There we go. Well, let's put it on the outside. Fantastic. I don't like how it's rounded. So we're going to put it on the inside and then it won't be rounded. All right. Let's hit OK. So this, oops, I moved my guide. Make sure you don't move your guide. This guy, this photo here, maybe we'll put right here, 
right? And that's going to kind of like go in between these two different photos. So let's do that with another one. I'm going to click and drag that out here. Fantastic. Controller Command T. We're just going to scale this way down. There we go. And then check this out. I want to show you a real cool trick here in Photoshop. Okay. Let's say this border that we have from this image, I want to copy it onto this one. Here in our layer panel, just hold Alt or Option and grab this FX and bring it right up. And boom, check that out. It just put it on there. Pretty cool, right? So then you could do, you know, something like this and say, wow, hey, look at that. That's real cool. Let's bring this one up to the very top. Okay. You can click on it and then hold Shift, Command, Close Bracket, which brings it all the way to the very, very top. There we go. And then this one, you know, I'll show you a different cool thing you can do. M for the marquee tool. I'm going to hold shift to make a square selection right there. Okay, check that out. We just made a square selection. Now I'm going to click on my layer mask. Now I'm going to hold alt or option and then add that. So look at that. I just square crop that photo. Basically just made a selection, clicked on my layer mask. Okay, and then I hold alt or option and FX drag that from one image to another one. And then look at that. So we have, you know, like the makings of a real cool, let's bring this way over here. So I'm gonna hold shift and we're just gonna kind of come over there. And then we got, you know, double the effect, right? So it's like we're carouseling over here, but we're carouseling, you know, uh, there we go, let's bring that in there. Uh, we're carouseling in, in multiple different dimensions. Wow, we're getting so fancy with it. Okay. What's the time now? The time now is exporting this all out as individual images. Remember where these guides are, that's what's going to be exported. So check it out. It's super easy to do. We're just going to go to file. We're going to go down here to export and we're going to go to save for web. Export save for web. I know it says legacy, but it still works really well. And then this view right here, this is going to show us our slices. So you can see all the slices are right there fantastic this all looks really good everything is sliced we're happy we're going to choose jpeg or quality can be 100 there we go everything looks really good and i'm going to go ahead and hit save right here so it's going to ask us hey where do you want to save this out or uh, we're just going to call this we're going to put a new folder in there called export okay and we're just going to hit uh let me sure i select all of those slices by the way there we go export and there we go we're going to hit save and it's basically going to save out all of these images into that folder so let's check it out all right we're going to go to our finder window let's create a new window our sample images check this out export i have images and then here we have all of our images look how nice this is they're perfectly sized they're ready to go for instagram so i'm just going to push all those let's go ahead and see this as icons and you can see all of my images here starting from left to the right of course you could have given them a name and it would like basically give it a number but now we have 10 different images that are perfectly sized and ready to go for instagram from here i would just right click i would go to share and then i like to just like airdrop this directly to my phone and you're good to go that's all there is to it super cool right so creating that guide don't forget you can download this psd from today's tutorial so you can just fill it with your own images and it'll be good to go now you can create a carousel now if you're saying hey what happens if i only have six images i want to upload to my carousel no big deal you just populate the first six spaces leave the rest blank you can export it out still the same exact way and then just delete the ones at the end that are blank so you don't have to use all 10 but it's there if you want it thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this tutorial give us a big thumbs up it mean a lot and if you want to get more free tutorials click on that subscribe button thanks again i'll learn you later bye everyone